Amen. Good morning. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercies endure forever. We're going to have you? to give Pastor Richard a little time because I took a lot of time this morning. I'm sorry. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. We'll see how this works. I can go for a half an hour. I can go for four hours. I mean, it's, a, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Just, those jokes never go over well. I'll try to respect your time. Just let's see what the Holy Ghost has for us this morning. Um, let's go over to Galatians, the third chapter, in verses 13 and 14. Then we're going to go over to Psalms 91 and verse 14. Right now we are talking about uh, what we have been delivered from. Uh, your redemption in Christ Jesus is more than enough. Amen. Amen. Your redemption in Christ Jesus is more than enough. Your redemption alone is exceedingly, abundantly above all that you can dare ask or think. And the majority of Christians don't even understand what redemption is. They just think redemption is, well, Jesus came to save me. And he came to give me a relationship with the Lord. Yes, that, and he came to save me from hell. Yes, but there's also this thing that he redeemed you from called the curse of the law. Many Christians know they've been redeemed from hell. They've been redeemed from sin. But do you know that you've been redeemed from the curse of the law? The curse of the law is just as real on this earth as the blessing of the Lord is. And uh, let's go now to Galatians 3.13 and 14. It says, Christ has redeemed us. That word redeemed means ransomed, released, delivered. Jesus paid for your freedom from the curse of the law. This past week, there was a holdup of gas because there was some Russian hackers uh, that uh, somehow took hostage of our oil pipeline on the east coast of the United States. They wanted a ransom. So somebody paid them $5 million to release that, that oil pipeline. So you're talking about, what is that? A release. Right? A rede- that's technically, you could say, deliverance. Because this past week, a lot of people were experiencing shortages, famine in gas. But they paid for the release of that pipeline. When Jesus came... You were the one held hostage by Satan. You were his servant. And Jesus paid your release with his own blood from all of Satan's power and authority. So 2,000 years ago in the mind of God, in the eyes of God, you were redeemed. And released, let go, as a hostage to Satan. He has no more power, no more authority in your life. Hell can't dictate your life. Satan can't dictate your life. And the curse of the law can't dictate your life any longer. Amen. Why? Because Christ became the curse for you on the tree. He took the curse that we had. He said, you know what, by faith I'll receive that. So he took it upon himself and he said, I'll pay the penalty for this curse and I'm going to set my people free. In essence, on the cross, Jesus was telling Satan, let my people go. So that's what had to happen on the cross. Satan had to let you go. All the curse had to let you go. And then the Bible says in verse 14, it says, That the blessing of Abraham has come on you through Jesus Christ. And that you might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit by faith. So for the curse of the law, Jesus released you from that. But then he placed on your life the blessing of Abraham. So you're blessed right now. 
You have a supernatural ability that comes from the throne room of God that you're wearing, that you're clothed in, and all you have to do is believe it and walk in it. Amen. Say, I've been redeemed from all the curse. And I have been blessed with the blessing of Abraham. Today, I am delivered and I'm blessed. Amen. That's your identity in Christ Jesus. That's what you have in Christ Jesus. These are your covenant rights. So you don't have to put up with any junk that Satan sends your way. Amen. So let's go over to uh, Psalms 91 and verse 14. Because what we want to operate in or what we want to experience is the reality of our redemption and our blessing in Christ Jesus. Psalms 91 and verse 14 says, Because you have set your love upon me, therefore will I deliver you. I will set you on high because you have known my name. So legally, your redemption and your deliverance is already settled. It's done. It's true. It's a reality. But what we want it to become is an experience in our life. Amen. How does that happen? By faith you got to believe what God said in his word, and you got to believe that that is enough to change your life. Amen. Amen. So then let's go over to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, because we're looking at what is the curse of the law. What have we been released from? Because if you don't know what you're released from, you can't ever experience deliverance. Amen. So let's go to verse, what is it, verse 20, I think we started. In the New Living Translation of Deuteronomy 28. Now it says at the very beginning of this, of this verse, it says that the Lord will cause these things to happen. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and verse, did I say 8? Uh, verse 20. 28 and verse 20. Almost there. We're good. Uh, 2820. <clears throat> 2820. There we go. All right. The Lord Himself will send on you curses. Now, the Bible doesn't say that He'll, that, that's not what it says in the Hebrew. It says that the Lord has to allow these things because of sin. Right? So we would just want to make sure that we walk in faith, we walk in love, we walk in the Holy Ghost. Right? We submit to godly authority. We, the Bible, as long as we are willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. That's a pretty good deal. So that's uh, Isaiah 1 and verse 19. I know the flesh doesn't like that word, obedience. The flesh hates that word, but it's good for you because it will bring plenty into your life. So I'm looking at a bunch of willing and obedient people in here today. And it doesn't mean that you're going to live your life perfectly, but it means that you're always going to live with a heart that's saying, God, you know, I I want to live right before you. I want to do what is right in your sight. I want to live with honor. I want to live with excellence. I want to live in faith. I want to live in love. If I miss it, please forgive me. But I'm going to get right back in the flow of the blessing. Amen? All right. So... In the Hebrew, it says that the Lord has to allow this. He doesn't send it to you. The enemy is the one that produces the curse. So I asked the Lord, why is it that this this whole entire thing, Deuteronomy 28 verse, what is it, 15 all the way down to verse 61. Why is it that the curse is so long but the blessing is so short? And the Lord told me, he goes, because I want you to realize what is Satan on this earth. I am being blamed for many of the things that Satan produces. So, the Lord, all of Deuteronomy 28, uh, 15 through 61, is all uh, an evaluation, an observation of what Satan produces on this earth. It comes from him. It does not come from God. So he said, uh, curses. Confusion. Frustration. We looked at that. You're redeemed from confusion and frustration. Amen. I'll be honest with you. This morning, I got frustrated. Driving over here, two blocks from turning into 15th court, man. Some guy in a trailer cut me off and almost sent us right into the wall. And you know what I did? I 
put on the brakes, I grinned my teeth, and I honked the horn as long and as fast as I possibly could. And then I put the accelerator on, and I sped up to him again, and I honked my horn so that he could hear me once again. I know I've been released from frustration, but it doesn't mean I always walk in it, okay? So if anyone's behind me, I'm sorry, forgive me, okay? We're all works in process, all right? If you heard a long horn, it was me, okay? But that's because the dude, he was trying to drive me off the road, okay? But the Lord has released us from confusion and frustration. I could have just said, gritted my teeth and put off the old man. See, you got to put off the old man. You got an old man to deal with and a new man. The new man is who you are in Christ. That's who your spirit is. The old man is what your flesh is. You got you to gotta deal with both of them. You got to put off the old man and you got to put on the new man in Christ Jesus. And it's not always going to be comfortable. When you resist the enemy or when you resist the curse of the law, it's not always going to be comfortable. Sometimes sickness and pain and disease will come to people. They will not muster enough energy and faith to resist it. They'll actually settle in it and they'll have a pity party. You cannot, you ever go to school when you were, you know, when you were going to school and you're a little kid and you get sick, right? It's just a little sniffle, but you like it because you're not going to school. <laughs> right? So you'll make up sicknesses and diseases and colds and flus and, you know, so that you can stay home. Yeah. Dip the thermometer in hot water, put it in your mouth and <laughs> see what I'm saying? What does that create, though? It creates a pity party mentality, a victim mentality, and it'll keep you defeated. See, you can't carry that attitude over it with a victorious, you know, man or woman of God in Christ Jesus. Though all those things have to be checked at the door. No loser's mentality in here. you got to have a winner's mentality. Amen. Because Satan cannot defeat you if you don't allow him. And you have the authority to resist whatever he throws his way. So he might send confusion and frustration through crazy drivers. And if you miss it, just like me, say, please forgive me, Lord. Wash me in the blood. All right? Now let's keep on going because we won't focus on all this. I have a, I have a mission today. Go to verse 21. Actually, let's go to verse 23. Because we've already, on Wednesdays and Fridays, we've dealt with wasting diseases. Anybody know what a wasting disease is? It's a neurological, nervous system disorder and disease. ALS, Parkinson's, MS, muscle weakness, muscle tremors. Those are all wasting diseases. And the Bible says you have been released from any type of physical, natural, mental weakness of, in your life. When Jesus was on the cross... He paid for your release. So you don't have to put up with it. You can resist it in the name of Jesus and curse it. Praise God. So verse 23, this is what I want to deal with today. It says that the skies above will be as unyielding as bronze and the earth beneath will be as hard as iron. Now, you know, thank, thank God for the Bible here. In simple man terms, it just simply means there's going to be famine and shortage. Famine and shortage. What's going on in the earth right now? Famine and shortage. And inflation. The economy right now is, the natural economy is, what do I do here? Is the outlook good or is the outlook bad? Is there going to be a famine? I mean, Chick-fil-A sauce, there was a famine of it. <laughs> yeah. Corn, there's a shortage of corn and it's caused the price to go up. There's a shortage of workers right now because of COVID and having to shut everything down. There's a shortage of chlorine. If you have a pool or if you like to go to your community pool, they're saying this is going to be the summer of chlorine shortage. 
and the price has doubled. The world is already calling for shortage. They're already calling for inflation like that of the 1970s. What do you do when you're faced with that type of fear? You first thing you got to realize is that it's a curse of the law. And if you're a child of God, you've been redeemed from it. You ain't got to participate in any famine or shortage. You can fight it with the good fight of faith. And you don't have to be afraid of inflation either because Christ released you from that as well. He shall provide for you if you live according to his new covenant. Amen. That's why, you know, I mean, people get mad at you when you talk about tithes and offerings. But you want to be, see, if you want to be successful in the kingdom, tithes and offerings are important. But you don't do it because you have to do it. You do it because God wants you blessed. And you do it because you love him. And you do it because you know that 10% that you give him out of every increase that you get, he's going to bless the 90 and he's going to turn it into more than enough. So you're not doing it out of fear. Many people tithe out of fear. You do it in faith. Knowing that the mighty hand of God is on that other 90%. And whatever he tells you to do with it, he will supernaturally bless it. Amen. I declare over your life today, you are released from any famine, shortage, or inflation. It shall not touch you in the name of Jesus. Because today you find out you're delivered. Amen. It'll pop up on your phone. A news, you know, the Apple News. Google News. I don't care if it's CNN, uh, you know, Fox News, Telemundo. It doesn't matter what they say. Their opinion and their idea of what's going on in the world does not define what I experience or what you experience in your life. I don't care if there's shootings out there. I don't care if drive-bys, armed robberies, knife stabbings. I don't care if there's natural disasters. You've been released. Amen. That's your covenant right. Amen. We think, you know, sometimes we just settle for what's going on in the world. But you have to remind yourself, Christ has released me. He paid for my release with his own blood. If I'm released, I'm not bound to it. You say, but you don't know what my financial situation is, preacher. Okay, fine. I don't care what it is. But the word of God can change it. And all you got to do is take Galatians 3, 13 and 14 and Deuteronomy 28 and 23 and just make this your confession continually throughout your day. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. According to Deuteronomy 28, 23, he has released me from famine. He has released me from inflation. He has released me from any type of shortage. And the blessing of Abraham is on me. Everywhere I go, I'm increasing. Because God's blessed. You know, it's the blessing that makes you wealthy. It's not you. The blessing is the source of that increase in your life. You just got to learn how to rest and be strong in the blessing of God in your life. And don't rest and be strong in the curse that the world wants to try to get you to believe. Amen. Did that make sense? you got to rest in the blessing and don't you rest in the curse. you got to identify with the blessing. You don't identify with the curse. Amen. Don't you tell you, don't you, don't you go out and say, I don't know if I can go to the mall right now. They might have a shooting out there. You know, people in this, it seems like the world has gone buck wild crazy. And you want to know why? Because Satan is at work. People are in fear. But I thank God. There's a scripture that says, even though we're in this world, we're not of. 
Amen. Who are you then? You're a child of God. I feel like we need to do this, and I feel like this is just going to be the message. When we'll get to this message next week about, or maybe I'll preach it on Wednesday. We were going to talk about delivered from the famine of, uh, of, uh, uh, of sickness and disease. But, so we'll get to that Wednesday or Friday or whatever the Lord leads. But the fact of the matter is, let's go to 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Because we need to hit on this, and then we'll go... You're a child of God. You're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. Just like you came from your natural parents, you're their child. You have their genes in you. You have their qualities, their characteristics. You look like them. Right? Everybody, all of, everybody in here, you came from another human being, right? You weren't born from a different type of species, right? Right? Everybody's a human, right? Okay, it sounds like a stupid question, but I have a point. Just a second, so hold on. All right, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. It says, so how very much our Father loves us. This is the New Living Translation. For he calls us his children. Okay, now let's go over. Take me to the King James Version. I like how it says that. It says, behold. That word behold means look at this. Put your eyes upon this. The only way you're going to get this is if you look at it and you meditate upon it. And he goes, behold. Look at the manner or the quality and the type of love Father God has bestowed upon you. That word bestowed means given. So Father God has given you a type of love. That comes from heaven. It's not a natural love. It's a heavenly love. I like what one pastor said. He he said it's a new type of love. And he's bestowed it. He's given it to you. And it says, what is this love? That we should be called the sons of God. That's love right there. Because we were enslaved to the enemy. We were held hostage by him. We were his servants, but you know, through Jesus Christ, he chose you, he selected you, he called you out of darkness. You heard the voice of God speak to you. He literally adopted you and said, that's my baby right there. You may look like a mess right now, but wait till you hear this word and wait till you call upon the name of Jesus because you're going to be my sons and my daughters. And that's what happened. When you heard that call and you gave your life to Jesus and you called upon his wonderful name, your spirit was made a child of God. Your spirit was rebirthed. Your spirit was rebirthed. Nothing happened really in the natural. If you had a bald head, after you got born again, you still had a bald head. Amen. The change wasn't evident on the outside. It was evident on the inside. God gave birth to your spirit and you became a child, a son, or a daughter of God. What do gods produce? What do humans produce? What do cats produce? What do dogs reproduce? What do gods reproduce? God said, I love you. I gave birth to you. You're a little God. Oh, you can't accept that right now. I can feel that. You're going, oh, you are. That's your carnal mind. That's your old man. Put it down. Now, I didn't call you God with a big G. You're a little God that submitted to the big God. But when you look at yourself like this, now don't go out and tell your friends this, okay? I know I'm going to get some backlash for this and somebody's going to give me a letter 
Amen. <laughs> but you have to start seeing yourself as God made you through Jesus Christ. Amen. You're a son of God. You're a child of God. Now, you're nobody without him. But you see, when you begin to say, and just this past week, the Lord began to show me this. And I was like, that can't be true. I can't say that, Lord. And it was just like, what do cats reproduce? What do humans reproduce? What do I reproduce? I gave you my genes. That's what the Lord's saying you. I gave you my nature. I gave you my life. You can't, you, you can't be attached to the curse of the law because I'm not attached to the curse of the law. I gave you, I programmed you with blessing and I called you my sons and my daughters. You're different, you're distinguished, and you shall set upon the high places of this earth and the, word, the world shall be jealous of you. Amen. He said, now, no, hold on, we're, we're, we're going somewhere, so just chill. If your religious, carnal, unrenewed mind is having a fit right now, just chill. I'm going to show you how to get this revelation, okay? Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world doesn't know us. The world's not going to identify your sonship in Christ. The world could care less who you are. The world's not going to choose you. The world doesn't like you. You want to know why? Because they don't know him. They don't know your daddy. And they see you as an enemy. Every sinner, every sinner on this earth, if they came across you and you began preaching to them, the majority of the time, they're going to consider you an arch enemy. Why? Because their spirit's different. Their spirit is filled with that old nature. They're actually sons and daughters of the devil. But you are different. So you can't look for the world's recognition, promotion, honor. Nuh-uh. You look for his promotion, his recognition, and his honor. Amen. I'm not after the world's honor. I'm not after the world's fame. I'm after his honor. Glory to God. So don't expect, the, don't go around telling your heathen friends, I'm a son of God. I'm a little God. They're going to think you went buck wild crazy. <laughs> we got to call the, 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 the loony bin on you now. And when you start talking like this, people go, well, that's a cult. It's not a cult. It is the Bible. It is what God said concerning you. Now, you have to keep an attitude of humility because you didn't do this. God chose you, called you, and he selected you and said, I'm adopting you. I'm adopting you as my own. So you always have to remind yourself, I didn't do any of this. It was by the hand of God and prophetic proclamation that I am even here. It's because of what Jesus did for me. Amen. You lose sight of that, then you're going to go to the loony bin. Hey, Okay, verse 2. We have enough time. He says, beloved, now. Right now you're the son or a daughter of God. Say, now. Am I a son of God? Now. Or a daughter of God. Whatever, you know. I, I don't want to, you know. It's, it's an interesting world out there. And it says, it does not yet appear what we shall be. It does not yet appear what we shall be. What is he talking about there? He's talking about the future after the rapture. Jesus is coming back soon. But until he does, we occupy this earth as sons of God. Because the earth is crying out. 
The earth is crying out right now for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now when he, now when he appears, when he get, comes back to get us, I mean, you might look like a superhero. You might look like Superman or Superwoman. I mean, you're going to be in your perfect, beautified, glorified state. So I don't know what that's going to look like. But the Apostle John goes, but we know that. We know. This is confident. And, he's, and he switches the tone here. He, he's not talking about the future any longer because that's what a bunch of Christians and denominations believe. When he comes back, it's all going to be okay. If I can just get to heaven, it's going to be okay. If I could just get through this earth, it's going to be okay. No, no. He said, but we know right now that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, I'm not talking about the future there. I'm talking about right now. You don't have to wait until Jesus returns or you go home to be with heaven to see me. Uh Uh-uh. All you have to do is open up this book. And when you find me, you find yourself. When you find who I am, you find who you are. When you find what I can do, you find what you can do. Don't you downgrade who you are no longer. Amen. Come on. Come on. Let it go. Don't you ever curse yourself again. Don't you ever speak low of yourself and disrespectful of yourself. Remember who you came from. Remember who you belong to. Remember who's going to take care of you. And when Satan comes and he tries to put famine and he tries to tell you inflation and shortage is coming your way, Make sure, number one, you're a tither. Come on, I wouldn't want to be a not a tither in this day and age. And you say, Lord, I've fulfilled your word. I've done what you've told me to do. I've obeyed you. I'm willing and I'm obedient. And you said I'll eat plenty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is going to set you above the, on the high places of the earth even this summer in the name of Jesus. When the earth is in famine and calamity, you shall be riding upon the high places of the earth. And if you're experiencing famine and shortage right now and you say, it doesn't look like I'm going to be having any high tide here, you take Galatians 3, 13 and 14. In fact, I, you know, this is what I believe the Lord is, uh, this is the first step. He said, your redemption and your identity is more than enough. You just take Galatians 3, 13, 14, and these scriptures that I'm giving you, you meditate upon them, you speak them, you declare them when Satan comes, and he says, oh, it's it's looking bad out there. You remind him Jesus released you. Amen. You remind your soul. You remind your flesh, I'm released. And you rest in that. You rest in that. You rest in that. Let me, let, let me... Let's, let's go over to John, the fifth chapter. And we're just going to look at one verse because I have to end it right here with this verse. Once you confess that and you believe that and you stick to the promise of God. In John, the fifth chapter, in verse, this is the, when Jesus fed the multitudes. You know, there's 20,000, 40,000 people there. And uh, it's in John, the, I'm sorry, the sixth chapter. John, the sixth chapter. And it's going to be in verse six, seven. It's going to be in verse seven or eight for you guys up there in the media room. 
Because we all know that Jesus, you know, he said, what do we have to supply for all these people? And all they could find was a little boy's lunch. It was some uh, anchovies and a couple crackers. That was it. We think it's like these, lo- like these beautiful, you, you know, uh, loaves of French bread and like two beautiful snappers, you know. No, it, it was like three crackers, a couple crackers, and a couple sardines. Anybody have a sardine? Ever? I hate those things. I absolutely hate them. I don't know how anybody eats them. But if you've seen a sardine, that's what this little boy had in his hand. That's what they put in Jesus' hands. And his disciples said, what is this going to do? How is this going to supply all of our needs here? Go to verse 10 for me. And it says, Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. So Jesus was just like, just watch me. Watch me work, you know. John 11, and it says, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks. When he had given thanks. The word that you have today may look like crackers, and it may look like sardines to you. But if you will take it and put it in your hands and give thanks that that word is coming to pass. How, watch this, how stupid did Jesus look that day? If you were one of his disciples, they had already criticized him and said, how is this going to happen? You got 20,000 people in front of you. All Jesus has is sardines and crackers. Everybody's wondering how. Get over your how. Put the word in your hand and give God some strange praise for that word. Some crazy, uncommon praise. It's strange praise, it doesn't make any sense to the world. It doesn't make any sense to the people in front of you. It doesn't make any sense to your friends. But if you will give God strange praise for this word today, God will do a strange and mighty miracle in your life. You take this home and you give God strange praise. Amen. And watch him do signs. And wonders. And just strange things. That's strange. That miracle today. That, you know, they, they, I believe they hadn't talked to this person in the United Kingdom for nearly 10 years. That's awkward. That's strange. Like, you're, it's an inheritance that is left. You haven't talked to the person in years? But you're going to keep them in your inheritance? Huh. That's strange. Whoever that happened to, they must be some strange people. They must have some strange praise. They must have some strange worship. When it doesn't look like anything good's going to happen, those must be the type of people that praise God. You know what your praise does? It causes the mighty hand of God to move on your behalf. He can move anything. Nothing's too hard for him. Glory Richard, to God. Richard, Amen. Now I'm done. Richard, you have, you have the pulpit. Yeah, Richard, it's, it's a way, honey. Amen. It's an understanding of the way. When he gave thanks, when he blessed it, he put a blessing over it, and it empowered to prosper. That's how the multiplication came. It was an understanding of the way he got a miracle. It's an understanding of the way you can get your miracles. Thanksgiving, praise, and bless it. Amen. Amen. And the Bible goes on to say they had more than enough. More than enough. Amen. All right, well, if, you're in the, if I could have you just bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're in this place and you do not know Jesus and you go, buddy, 
I am experiencing the curse of the law and I need to get set free. Well, then this message is for you. And today, by calling upon the name of Jesus, you can experience this redemption. Going through the cross of Jesus Christ, you can experience this redemption for your very own self and for your family. This is good news. Jesus came to release you from all the curses of the law that's on this earth. This does not have to be a bad summer for you. The rest of the year doesn't have to be a bad year for you. If you'll just surrender to Jesus, he will make a way for you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, whoever calls upon his name shall be saved. Glory to God. Whoever calls upon his name shall be released from the bondage of the enemy. Would you do that with me today? If that's you, you feel that tug in your heart, just say, dear Lord Jesus, I call upon your wonderful name. And I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I'm asking you to fill me with your holy presence and your spirit. Father God, I come before your throne and I call you my Father. By the, by the name of Jesus Christ, I call you my Father and you call me your child. I surrender to you. Make yourself oh, ever so real to me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. You're released. You're released. You got the same blessing that we have on you right now. And uh, if you did uh, just say that prayer for the first time or you were, you know, walking away from Jesus and uh, you just came back to him, please go to our website at wordsoflife.com. And there you'll find a link where you can just say, I just got born again or I just got saved. Please press it. Fill out that form. It will go to Pastor Marcus. He will give you a call. All right. Can I pray for you real quick? In the name of Jesus. Father, we bind. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind any curse that you're trying to put upon God's people. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the curse of pain. I rebuke the curse of sickness. I rebuke the curse of disease. I rebuke the curse of financial hardships. I rebuke the curse of shortage and, fa and famine. I rebuke the curse of wasting diseases. I rebuke the curse in the name of Jesus of frustration and confusion. And right now, we thank you, Father. Your blessing is activated. Your blessing is working in your people's spirits, souls, and bodies. In the name of Jesus, we release that empowerment right now to prosper in everything that your people put their hands to. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It will be a day, every day of extreme blessing in the name of Jesus. It will be days of heaven upon this earth. It will be days of deliverance, protection, and safety in the name of Jesus. And we cover every one of you, your families and your lives in the blood of Jesus. Now put your hand up against the coast of South Florida, this east coast. Say, we plead the blood around southeastern Florida. We enforce that bloodline 100, 200, 300 miles out. We cover this region in the blood of Jesus. And we bind and rebuke natural disasters, hurricanes, storms, and curses in this area in the name of Jesus. We speak peace to this region in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Well, I love you. The altar is open. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon.